Hello, and thank you for joining us for this Learning and Growing 2021 presentation, Rise and Shine, using Wakelet to promote student interaction and collaboration. My name is Victoria Kelly, and I am a member of the customer support team here at Hawk Learning. Our presenters today are Crystal Trapani and Kristen White. Crystal Trapani is an instructional technologist with the Center of Learning and Teaching and an adjunct instructor in the Department of English at Old Dominion University. Kristen White is an instructional technologist within the Center for Learning and Teaching at Old Dominion and is the university's lead Zoom trainer. We will have a live Q&A session today with Crystal and Kristen today. So if you have any questions, please enter them into the Q&A box as we go. That Q&A box will be in that um, Zoom toolbar in your Zoom screen. And we will make sure we have time for questions after the presentation. On that note, I'll go ahead and hand it over to our presenters. The floor is yours, Crystal and Kristen. Thank you. Crystal, you're muted. I was fun in my share anyway, so. <laughs> All right, so good morning, everybody, or afternoon, depending on where you are. We are going to talk about what Wakelet is this morning and how to use it. Wakelet is a free platform that allows you to save, organize, and share content from across the web. If you've heard of Pinterest, which you probably have, you want to think that this is almost like an educational Pinterest. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with Wakelet, including creating a portfolio, organizing your research, um, generating a multimodal annotated bibliography, collaborative projects or presentations, a repository of course notes, um, how-to guides and resources. And we're actually going to show you a really brief video for what they talk very briefly about what Wakelet is, a bit more in depth. So the web is full of content and this is growing every day. Sometimes the best content can get buried in no time at all and it can be hard for people to find this content, find it again and then share it. So rather than losing the content that matters, you can save, organise and share it with Wakelet. Anything from the web can be saved in Wakelet. Articles, tweets, Instagram posts, YouTube videos, maps, Spotify playlists and so much more. And once you've organised your content into collections, you can reorder the content however you want, add your own notes and images, and then tell a story with it. You can keep your collections private, make them unlisted, or make them public and share them with the world. You can customise your collections however you like, and even invite people to collaborate with you on collections that you've created. Wakelet can be used for anything you like. Save articles to read later, tell stories, build visual portfolios, gather research, plan your next break, archive Twitter chats, and promote people, events, and ideas. And it's completely free to use. So sign up today to get started. All right, so like I said, just very short to give you that intro. Um, and what I'm going to actually show you is how to make a late wakelet. We're gonna talk about how you can use them in your course, how you can share them with your students, uh, how you can have your students collaborate. And so the first and most obvious thing is to make an account. And it is just, you go to Wakelet's website and you click log in or not log in, you click create or sign up. And then you've got a choice. You can do an Apple login, a Google login, Microsoft, Facebook, or with your email. Um, so you can, you know, depending on what rights you have at your institution, those are all available to you. And so if we were to make that profile, the first thing we would need to do, this is we, when we come into it, this is actually where we would come. We would come to this page and yours would be blank probably because you probably don't have any Wakelet collections made yet. Um, and so we're going to start with kind of setting up our profile. And if I go and I click my, it's my first letter of my first name up on the top right, this is my profile. It's very plain right now. So let's jazz it up a little bit. If I click edit profile, I can select a header image and I can either upload an image from my computer or I can choose from from a library repository of images from Unsplash. Um, so let's just search like uh, I teach composition. So let's do writing maybe. And I could pick whichever image makes me happy, whichever one I like. I'll grab this one with the computer, or the laptop. And it takes just a moment. And I have the ability, I can zoom in, zoom out, 
Um, you know, so you do have the option to, I could really zoom it in, you have no idea what's there. Once I'm happy with how it looks, I can select apply and my header image appears up there. Now for a profile image, your only option is to upload an image from your computer. Um, ideally, your image is gonna be about 200 by 200 pixels. I'm just gonna grab an image for the sake of example. And it gives me a little editor so I can, again, I can zoom in, I can zoom out. Um, but if once I'm happy with it, I can go ahead and hit save and now it appears there in the middle. I can also edit my name. So maybe I messed up, made a total spelling mistake. Um, maybe I've changed my name. Maybe I've decided I wanna go by a nickname. All I gotta do is hit in that box and I can retype it. I can change my Wakelet identifier as long as no one else takes it. And this is what it appears at the end of the URL. So mine is at crystal003. And if I'd like to add a short biography, I can. I also have the ability, if I hit the little green circle with the plus inside, I can add links to my social media or my LinkedIn or Google Docs or anything that's available on the internet for people to access. Um, once I'm kind of happy with how it all looks, if I'm like, yep, this is it, it's perfect, I hit save and the page refreshes. And now this is how it looks uh, if somebody were to look for my uh, profile within Wakelet. And at this point, I'll hand it over to Kristen, and she's going to show you how to make a collection. All right. So I'm just grabbing the correct screen. I apologize for the delay. So I am currently in a separate space in which we have created a space to, just for this presentation itself. And so I have my profile just like Crystal does under herself, but you can also make additional spaces um, as well. Each of the space, spaces, it's the best thing to understand is what a space is versus a collection. A collection is an individual wakelet. So it, it sounds, when, when most people hear collection, they're like a collection of items. Actually, a collection and wakelet is an individual piece. And each individual piece can be grouped together into a repository to make a space, such as the one that we're looking at right now, which has multiple wakelets under the rise and shine um, section or space, I should say space. A section is only for your actual profile itself where you can organize. And we'll go over that a little bit more later about your profile. So again, a collection is one wakelet, a space is a repository of wakelets, and the sections are organizing wakelets on your profile page. Your profile page will only show those that are publicly facing to the world though. From your preferred space, the first thing you'll do is select create a new collection. It's the top left option and it has a green circle with a plus. And it is going to give you then the option of four different layout options. We have media view, compact view, grid view, and mood board. The media view is going to provide a linear fashion with different types of content occupying different size spaces versus the compact view is very similar to that, except it's going to be laid out in condensed smaller sections in uniform and a uniform list that might not display everything from each piece until it's expanded or selected. The grid view is going to provide two columns, again, uniform space. Um, so you'll need to expand or select those items. And then the last option is a mood board. This content displays more like a collage in different spaces and shapes and sizes, um, depending on the content added. And this is often one of the most common for real-time collaboration. So we're actually going to be utilizing this later. So I'm going to select mood board, but I'm gonna show you what it will look like if we add content and then it were in the other views. We will also talk about in the accessibility section about which of these four views work best for accessibility. So I'm gonna select mood board and then I'll select use layout. Now I have a brand new space I'm sorry, brand new collection. Let me not use that other word and confuse you. And we have blank area. We have a, another place we can add a header. So if we are going to create, if I have an account, I have three options. I can upload an image, I can up or I can select a GIF, or I can select a photo from the library, which is Unsplash. I'm going to select Unsplash for the library. And we are going to be working on uh, collaboration. So I'm going to look up a post-it and find a fun picture for us. 
of us collaborating um, with different ideas. So now I have the option, I can edit that cover image if I don't really like it now that I've seen it bigger, or I can also edit how large it is on my page. Currently it's in full cover image. If I use the drop down, I can make it half that size and that way you can see more of the content on the screen right off the bat. Or you can also hide the cover image, but why would you choose the cover image to hide it? So I'm going to leave it at the half cover image for now. The next item you should do is actually name your collection. So what is the title of this collection? I'm going to call it Ideas for Collaboration today, if I could type. And then we have a description, which you might want to think about it as a subtitle or subheading. So in this area, I'm going to put, uh, what are some ways you might use like Wakelet? From here, we are ready to move on to actually adding content to our collection. There are multiple options right below your description. There is an area for you to directly paste a URL, anything from the web. We're also going to go over all the rest of the options in a second. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a website so we can see the website first. And I'm going to copy this URL from the website, go back to my Wakelet and paste it. Once I paste it, it automatically populates on the screen and it gives me what it pulled from the website. But let's say I don't really like what it says or I want to you know, include capitalization or punctuation. I simply select to edit using the pencil icon at the top right of the actual content piece. At that point, I can edit the image. If I want to upload, again, um, I, have a, I have more options because I have an account. If you don't have an account, you'll have limited options for this. I can also reposition the image and that's going to give me that same idea of what Crystal said earlier about resizing. If I want to edit the actual content, I just click anywhere um, in there and I can start editing from there. If I notice that, oh, I wanted a period at the end or anything like that, when I am done editing, all I do is select done and it's updated on the Wakelet itself. You can literally post anything from the web. So they also noted like Instagram posts and things like that. There's not necessarily integrations for all of these things, but as long as it has a URL, you can paste it here. The next option is the text editor. So if you select the text uh, icon, which is the paper and pencil to add text, you'll get where that next piece of content will be populated, a little pop-up that allows you to add text you can bold your text, italicize, underline, but we don't suggest using underlines. We suggest that you leave underlines um, specifically only for hyperlinked text. H1 and H2 meaning headings. You have the option to bullet a list, but you can't number a list or have sub bullets, unfortunately. You can also align it left, center, or middle and hyperlink descriptive text versus just pasting a URL, which is best for accessibility. So if I want to add some content, I usually want to use a, a heading if it's going to be not just a couple sentences, I'm going to introduce it with a title of some sort. So an example might be, I'm just gonna put annotated bibliography here. If I could spell though, that would be a lot more helpful today. Once I hit enter, it automatically defaults back to the regular paragraph text. And now I can, um, Let's say I'm going to identify to my students what needs to be included. That might be easiest to take in for a student as a bulleted list. So I might start with at least 10 uh, resources. And now let's say we want to actually link out to something such as Purdue Owl. I can take that link. I can copy that URL, come back to my Wakelet. I'm going to highlight the words that I want to be created into the link. Select the link icon on the second line all the way to the right, paste the URL, select add link. And now that is going to be an active link for any of the learners. You may have noticed that this is a green uh, color. Um, we, ha we have reached out. It is actually not meeting color contrast, but it is an active link and um, they will be able to select that once they are on this page, as long as they're not in edit mode. Once I'm done adding whatever content for the text, I select done, 
and it is added to the leftmost um, area of the actual wakelet in the mood board. The next option is an image. Again, you have three options if you have an account, upload, GIF, or library. If I want to go here and I'm looking for something such as collaboration, I can find an image that I like. Unfortunately, images do need alt text and Wakelet does have some limitations on that. So we want to bring that to your attention. Right now, it automatically puts that image there, but you do still need to edit it to give um, a description for a student that is using assistive technology. So again, if you um, go to that specific content and select the edit icon, which is the pencil, it's going to allow you to edit that image if you would like. And the one that is required is editing the caption. The caption is going to be what's going to be identified to a screen reader if they're using an assistive technology. Unfortunately, there is no way to mark it as decorative. So if it's not adding to the context of um, the page very much, you can't just mark it decorative so it skips over it. So you are going to at least want to give a brief, uh, you know, what is in the image. And I'm just going to put this as an example of um, people collaborating. You never want to use the words image of or picture of because it's going to be identified as an image or picture. Now, let's say I wanted to actually give a little bit more that I'm telling a story kind of like what they were talking about in the video. I can actually add more additional text in this description area and it will add it below. When I'm done, done editing, I select done and it adds it to our content collection. Okay, we are on to bookmarks. This one's a little bit finicky, so I'm going to show you a couple of things. I actually have bookmarks in this collection, but when I select bookmarks, it tells me that there are no items found. So um, this is something that unfortunately you might have to do in a roundabout way or in a different way, and I'm going to show you two different ways to do that. One being you can do what's the, called the browser extension. So if I add Chrome, Safari, and Firefox all have an extension for Wakelet. And if I go to a specific website, so let's say I go to this annotated bibliography website, and I already hyperlinked it elsewhere. But if I use this Wakelet add-on, it will populate a, a pop-up for me, and I will be able to see what Wakelet collections and spaces I have access to. This does take a moment sometime. And right now, this is on my personal one. So I'm going to go to the space that we are working on, um, which is the Rise and Shine. And it's going to list any of the uh, any of the collections that I have access to. I'm going to select the ideas for collaboration and select save. And when I close, it was actually going to automatically close. When I go back here, you'll notice that it didn't automatically refresh. If you notice this, either give it a few seconds or we suggest refreshing your page it should automatically push this as a bookmark directly to the page. And it has. Again, if you want to edit how the image is shown or what is written below it, just select that edit icon or pencil icon. Another way to do this, I'm going to say I'm done editing for a moment. If I am back in my space and I see the ideas for collaboration, I need to first go to the bookmarks area. So right now it's showing me all of my collections and now I want to look at what bookmarks I have available to me. So right now I have two available and if I want to actually add this to a collection, I can either select the bookmark and add to collection or I can also, no, oh, I'm gonna click the right one today add to collection with just using the bookmark, I apologize. So I'm gonna go back to that rise and shine. I'm going to select the ideas for collaboration and save, save to collection. And now it's going to add it to that collection as well. So those are a couple different ways to work with the bookmarks if it is not letting you find the bookmarks from the collection um, directly within the Wakelet itself. So I'm gonna go back into view collection for the ideas for collaboration and it has saved it as a bookmark here, so I'm going to edit. Hopefully it's going to let me find it. It's, like I said, been finicky. It's showing and then going away. So it didn't actually work as expected. So unfortunately, the best way is going to be doing it through the browser application as it is not properly pushing it here right now. Um, but those are some ways to use the bookmarks. The next option is the upload PDF. 
Um, unfortunately, we really don't suggest using PDFs because they are usually inaccessible to people that are using assistive technology such as screen readers because they usually aren't tagged appropriately. So if you can avoid using a PDF and link to something else, um, that would be best. But you do have the option. You simply select it. I find the uh, PDF itself and then it will put it onto your screen as a PDF. Uh, you can then edit the text that's below it or to the side of it, depending upon the type of view or layout you are in. There are additional applications to the right, which is going to be this plus icon um, with the grid. You have the option to add tweets. Um, we're going to go over how to add Flipgrid videos, YouTube videos, Google Drive, and, and then these other two applications, OneDrive and Adobe Spark, are very similar to Google Drive. So we'll show you some of them, but it's going to be a similar process for the OneDrive and Adobe Spark as well. So for tweets, I'm, I'm not actually linked to my Twitter account, but I do have an example for you to see. Um, so here is what a tweet would look like if you did have it connected and then in, and added it to your collection. You can add multiple tweets um, at one time and organize them as you're adding them as well. If we want to do Flipgrid or a video, this is going to allow us, if we have a Flipgrid account, it is going to allow us to record up to a 10 minute video. You can also import a video if you do have a video, but again, it's limited to 10 minutes. It is telling me that I'm having an issue about my camera. I'm going to try turning off and see if it doesn't fight with me. All right, so if I am looking for the type of devices, because right now it is showing me that it is capturing my video, but I am not being able to be seen, so that's okay. We still have the option. I can also do a record my screen, so I'll do that to show you an example. You can upload a clip. You can do just your mic if you would prefer. If you have something in your background when you are doing a video, you want to make sure you're mirroring your video so that the text is actually reading in the correct fashion for those um, watching. If you don't want audio and you just want to record maybe a step-by-step -step process and you're not going to narrate it, that's another option. You can mute yourself, uh, record, and then those device settings are gonna be where you decide what mic and or camera you are using. There are also effects and backdrop, but we're not going to go over those. Those are um, some other options you do have, though. So if I select record screen, I'm going to select start screen recording, and I have three separate monitors. So I'm going to select um, my screen one. You also, similar to Zoom, have you can select a specific window or a specific Chrome tab. But for the sake of this, ex uh, this example, I'm going to select screen one and select share. I'll get a three second countdown. And it is going to allow me to start recording. As you can see, I don't have anything really going on on my screen, but it is recording me talking. When I select stop recording, it's going to allow, it will give me a preview of what I've just recorded. So if I don't like it, I can, you know, close that and go back. If I want to add something to it, I, you know, I only have seven seconds here, but I want to add something. I can select add more and it will let me continue to record. Once I am ready, though, I can select next and I can add a description. The description says optional, but it's really important that you add it here. It's going to actually be the title of your video. Otherwise, it's going to be untitled. So when it gets add, added to your wakelet, it's not named anything at all. So I'm just going to put, this is, and if I could type correctly today, an example Flipgrid video. And then I can select confirm. And once I do this, it's going to upload it to my Flipgrid. It's going to populate the video directly on my screen. One thing you might note is that I cannot edit this bookmark because it's a video that I recorded. I can't edit the video, so that's one downfall. Um, the other item is I can only, once I'm not editing the page, I only have current access to, you know, how fast it's playing and whether or not, uh, or I'm sorry, the the quality of the video and if I want it full screen. I can also delete any of these items at the top right using the delete trash can. Um, there will be closed captioning, but it's going to be machine generated closed captioning, which does not meet 508 compliance. So you will need to edit it. One thing to think about is you cannot edit it from the Wakelet website itself. You will actually need to go to your Flipgrid account and you'll notice that I don't see any videos. All of the videos you record 
with your Wakelet account go to what's called Shorts. And so when you do it in Shorts, you'll notice that it has your video that you just recorded. If you select the video, it will start. Oh, it didn't start playing. Yes, I can edit the title here. So if I forgot to add the title, I have to go to Flipgrid to add the title. The second option is going to be closed captions, but this specific video is still rendering those closed captions. So I'll have to come back later and edit those closed captions for this video. Once I'm done editing those, all of those edits will be pushed to the video that is on my actual, um, my, my Wakelet itself though. So that is how you add a Flipgrid video. And the next option we have is going to be adding a YouTube video. So let's say you have just an idea. Um, maybe you're doing research on something or your students are doing research and they're trying to find resources and they're adding their resources to a, 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 a Wakelet. They can search for a specific, you know, keyword or keywords and they can find a video that they feel best, you know, meets what they're looking to do. So I'm going to just select this random video from Simon Sinek and I'm going to select to add. Again, it's going to have specific text below it, but if I don't like what comes through, I can simply select the pencil icon to edit what it says below it. And the last one we will show how to add is the Google Drive. I've already linked my Google Drive. Just so you know, you have to link all of the accounts so that you have access to these things. Um, I'm going to select this accessible digital um, Google Slides that we have. And now, I'm sorry, Google Doc that I have. And it is going to put it right on here. Again, if I want to edit what it says, I can edit through the icon here. But we are currently in what's called a mood board. If I want to see what it will look like in different views, I'm going to show you really quick at the top right, there's a circle with different shapes in it, rectangles and squares. I'm going to select that and I'll show you what this would look like if we were in media view. Media view is going to be that linear fashion. It's similar, but not exactly the same. If I don't like where something is on the page, I can click and drag it to another area. Unfortunately, there isn't keyboard accessibility to do that that we have come across. So the compact view is similar to this, except now you'll notice that this is gonna be more uniform in the sizing. And it's going to be, I'm going to have to look for um, it to give me more information on some of these. I'm gonna to have to expand them. I'm not gonna be able to feel, fully view them quickly there um, to the best way possible. This one we have, it is going to be two columns. Um, but again, we are only going to be able to see parts of things and we're gonna to have to do a lot of scrolling. And then this is that mood board again. Same idea for any of them though. If you want something moved around, you drag and drop it. Um, so we just went over how to add all of those items and change your layout. Once you are done editing, if you select done, now you have the option to actually utilize some of those things. So I can now use that descriptive link text, whereas before I couldn't really access it the same way. And I am going to turn it back over to Crystal for the next section. Thank you, Kristen. So now that you have made your Wakelet, um, you want to talk about how you're going to make it available to your students. So if you like, this is within my Wakelet itself, I have three Wakelets here. But if I go back to my public profile, I only have two. Um, and so we need to talk about how we would share this out. Um, in order to make it show up in my public profile, I'm actually gonna have to change the share settings. Um, by default, it's listed as unlisted, um, but you do have three choices here. You have public, you have unlisted, which is going to be only people who have the link can access it in private. Private is only I can look at it, or if I added Kristen as a collaborator, she could look at it, um, but no one else can. So in order to make this Wakelet collection up here, right here on my profile page, I actually have to select public. And a good easy way to check, um, instead of having to go in and look at the visibility, the little icon, this little globe icon for public appears underneath each one that's public. If I hit cancel right now, I see the little lock icon. Um, so now I'm gonna make it public and hit save. And now if I go back to my Wakelet profile and refresh the page, 
there we go. Now I can see it. And I actually have the ability to move um, my wakelets around. And so you want to start to think about how are you going to organize your wakelets, especially if you have your students um, creating wakelets and sharing them with you. Um, remember, a collection is one wakelet. Um, and so a space is a repository of wakelets. And then within your wakelet profile, you have the option to make a section. So right now I have gen ed course material in a section to itself and then I've got this writing in the freshman year this is a this is a sample annotated bibliography so I'm going to actually add a new section and I'm going to name it um, English to 11 and I'm going to click add section and now I have the opportunity I could if I'd like to reorder these I can um, so maybe I want my gen ed course materials first then to 11 second and then to add this wakelet collection to that section um, by uncategorized I'm going to hit the drop down and go to English 211 and now it has moved it. Now let's say you messed up and you don't want this in that English 211 section. You want to send it back to uncategorized. It's really scary the first time you do it because you worry you're doing it wrong. You actually will delete the section and it's not going to delete your wakelet. It's just going to delete that section and now it's back to uncategorized. Okay. Um, so the next thing we need to talk about is accessibility. Um, accessibility is certainly something we want to make sure we're always mindful of, uh, because the reality is if we have a student who has a learning difference, we want to make sure they still have the opportunity to learn just like their peers. Um, and so there are some things uh, we notice within accessibility. Wakelet is very receptive to accessibility issues, like we have uh, sent them the feedback about the color contrast. Um, but this is a newer kind of ed tech thing, so they are still working out the kinks. Uh, some, of the lay, some of the layouts do not work as well with a screen reader. Um, some are more accessible than others. Others, And when we tested them, um, the screen reader actually reads a type text, so like this box right here, um, better than it would kind of something set up as a media view. Uh, it's very choppy with compact view and grid view. It didn't even know what to do. Um, so we do not suggest using grid view because it's going to be inaccessible. Um, the color contrast, like I mentioned. The text editor is li limited. You only can have heading one and heading two, so you're not able to make a heading three, heading four, et cetera. Um, numbered lists are not available, and you can't make a hanging indent. Um, and so that's problematic if maybe you have your students making like uh, citations. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. And uh, also with that not being able to make a hanging indent, you also can't make another level of bullets. When you move those items um, within the collection, like Kristen showed you, unfortunately, there is no keyboard uh, functionality. So you have to either be using a mouse or a trackpad in order to move items within the collection. Um, and there is, and I'm going to show it to you, there is an immersive reader. So if I said, hey, Wakelet, will you read this to me? All I've got to do is click just to the left of the item, the little book with the speaker icon, and it's actually going to open it. And it will actually read it to me. I can hit play and it'll go word by word and read it to me. Um, so that is that's a good thing to have for accessibility. But if you have embedded your wakelet into your LMS, the immersive reader is not available. Um, so that is something you want to keep in mind. And so you've made your wakelet, you kept your accessibility in mind, now you want to share it and embed it. Um, you are able, like I said, to take this within an LMS. So at the top, kind of in the middle, there's a little arrow icon. And I do have the option to share it several different ways, but what I'm actually going to look at is this embed code. So I click embed, and if you've ever done anything with the HTML in your LMS, you're going to recognize the iframe. Um, we, my institution is using Blackboard Learn, but this should work within any LMS that you have the ability to access the HTML. I can kind of preview it very briefly and go, yep, is this how I want it to look? Does everything look good? Um, and as long as I'm happy with how it looks, I can go ahead and work with it. But maybe I want to change the layout. So maybe I want it to go to the LMS as a grid view, or maybe I want it more of a linear view. And you're just going to find the one that's most appropriate for what you're using it for. Um, you can decide do you want a border around it or not, and this is just going to add a little border around it so it doesn't just bleed into the page. If your LMS requires you to have a fixed height, you can certainly add that. Do you want light mode or do you want dark mode? 
an option you can make. Uh, but once you're happy with everything and how it looks, you're just going to simply click the copy embed code. And again, my institution is using Blackboard Learn, so that's what I can show it to you in. Um, but it should work in Canvas, it should work in Brightspace, it should work in most LMS. And so I'm just going to go and make a content item within my Blackboard shell, and I'm just going to call this example Wakelet. Obviously, you want to make sure you're communicating the name consistently with how you've uh, referred to it with your students. And I'm going to go in, into the HTML editor, and I'm just going to paste that iframe and hit save and press submit. And now when it refreshes, it's actually within my LMS. Um, and just like a Google Doc or Google Slides, if I were to make edits to this Wakelet, collection, it would automatically push to my LMS. Um, now, certainly if a student was looking at it in the moment in which I made the edit, they might have to refresh their page, um, but it does go ahead and push for you. So you don't have to go and put the iframe back in. Once you've done it, it's there. And some limitations. There we go. There are some limitations we do need to think about. Um, when we're using Wakelet and we also need to think about privacy too. So maybe I'll talk about privacy first and then that way you can make sure it's the right choice for you. Um, Wakelet is very committed to making sure they are FERPA compliant. Um, and if your institution has a data agreement that you're required to have before you can use something with your students, they're actually willing to work with you to see if you, know, you guys can work it out together. Um, so they are very open. They take your students' privacy very uh, seriously, just like you would want them to take. So um, you know, that is something that they are actively working on. And so let's talk about some limitations. Like I said, um, there is a browser extension. And as Kristen showed you, it's it's a little finicky sometimes. Um, and it's often not intuitive. So we actually you know, maybe consider not using that. There is also an Android and Apple iOS app, but it was just updated. We literally got the email yesterday. So there's not a lot of documentation on it yet. Um, in general, there is a little bit of uh, time delay within a Wakelet. Um, you know, some items, especially if you've embedded like a lengthy PDF um, or a video, it might take a few minutes to appear within Wakelet's interface. When in doubt, just refresh your browser and it's probably there. Uh, just know it might take a minute. Uh, the Wakelet space organization, you can only organize a space um, which, if you recall, this is a space where we have kind of all of our wakelets all collected together. A, a space can only be organized by alphabetical A to Z uh, when a, correction, a collection is created, so newest to oldest, or latest updated. Unfortunately, like we would have really liked to have been able to put these in the order of our presentation, but we weren't able to do that. Um, so that is something to keep in mind that you can't do that. Um, if you are using it with your students, which we certainly hope you'll think about it, you can't comment or provide feedback to the student directly to that student. Um, you can only give an emoji feedback reaction, and we're actually going to talk about that a little bit more in a little bit. Um, there is no timestamp provided. You just get the date in which something was changed. Um, and your added by is going to be only the person who actually generated the item. So maybe TJ and Susan are working on a project together and Susan generated all the items, but TJ went back and edited all of them. They're all going to show you that they were generated um, by Susan. You're not gonna see that TJ edited them. So it's important to keep in mind. If you do not have uh, a Wakelet account, just know you will not be able to use the Unsplash uh, image repository. You'd have to upload an image from your own machine. And within a collection, if you have the students accessing Wakelet without an account, just know they are enable, they are able to name themselves whatever they would like, um, even if that name's inappropriate um, or if it doesn't match the name on your roster. So just keep that in mind. You also can't moderate a Wakelet. And so what this means is students can add whatever content they want, which sometimes is great. And sometimes it's not great. Um, there is no way to kind of moderate what's there. So you can't look at it and go, yep, we're going to go ahead and publish that to the course. It's automatically published when they put it in. 
Um, if you have your students reacting to each other's posts, again, we'll look at the reactions in a minute. It's Wakelet's not going to push the most commented or most reacted to post to the top. You would have to manually reorder it. Um, and this part's a little tricky here, so I'll, I'll make sure I kind of very clearly on it. If a student has a private Wakelet, which is fine, um, and they share it to you as private, if they if you've got a Wakelet collection, you're asking them to put their Wakelets in and they drag that link over and it's private, you can't see it. You won't be able to see it, um, even if it's added to your sub collection that maybe you have shared as unlisted. You want to make sure you tell your students very clearly, um, you know, they're, they're, you're, that they have it shared as unlisted because otherwise you won't be able to see it. You can. Um, if you want to make sure that your students can't see each other's work, because if they all put an unlisted link within your Wakelet collection, they'll be able to see each other's work. And I know some people don't want that. Um, you have two options there. You could have the students set their visibility to private and invite you as a collaborator. Or instead of adding their collections to yours, you can have them create their own collection, make it unlisted, and then they could just send you the link directly. If you're adding collaborators to a Wakelet by default, um, they can only add, they can't edit or delete. And so you wanna make sure if you are asking students to maybe work on a project together that they have you know, changed those share settings. Um, we did find whenever we would embed a Wakelet, such as like this one here, just under the text within another Wakelet collection, we would actually have to re-upload the picture for the header image every time, which if you're just doing one, it's fine. But if you realize that and you have to go back and redo the image header for 15 of them, it gets a little tedious. Um, video limitations, you are limited to 10 minutes on the videos within Flipgrid, as Kristen said. However, that's not necessarily a bad thing because research proves that our students, their engagement wanes significantly after five to seven minutes. So Flipgrid's kind of forcing you to, to do good pedagogy. Um, the videos in Flipgrid do not have the ability to edit closed captions within Wakelet. You do have to go to Flipgrid directly. And just keep in mind, those machine-generated captions are not 508 compliant. Um, the videos from Flipgrid can't be edited once they're added, and the videos from YouTube have the captions available as are found on YouTube. Um, just like Kristen mentioned earlier, and I'm, I think I mentioned too, um, PDFs do have to be tagged for accessibility as they appear on your computer, and do keep in mind most people are not tagging uh, their PDFs appropriately, and the reason we bring this up is a student who has a visual difference and they're using a screen reader, they rely on those tags to navigate the PDF. Um, PDFs do take a few moments to render out, and if you try to access them as soon as you upload it, so if you upload that PDF and you click on it, you're probably going to get a 404 error, wait a couple minutes, refresh it, and it will be there. Um, so at this point, I'm actually going to hand it back over to Kristen, and she's going to talk to you all about collaborating on Wakelet Collection. I muted myself for her and then I started talking. I apologize. I've got too many windows going today. Um, so now you've created your Wakelet or um, your space and you want to share items with your students. How are we gonna do that? Well, the first thing I'm going to do before I even show you that is I'm going to go into the space and kind of show you what we were talking about regarding how you can't organize. Unfortunately, at the top sort by, we have the A to Z created or updated. So when you change it, unfortunately, the A to Z is only going to work if you, for instance, if we had numbered these, it would have put them in the correct number order um, based on, you know, the order that we were presenting. But we didn't do that because the titles made more sense. So that is one downfall. But if you have a lot of collections, you can search for them as well. Now, when you are in a space or in a collection, you have the opportunity to share with another individual or individuals. Um, it is going to, by default, go to contributor versus administrator. So I'm in a space, and if I want to add the entire space, so the entire uh, repository of these with another member, I select members first, and I already can see that I am the owner and Crystal is currently an administrator. But if I want to invite others, I select the invite members at the top left, which is that plus sign again. 
I can provide a link directly here. And if I copy the link and provide it to them, it allows them to join this space. If I have an email or if I know their username, I can also add it here. And the other or last option would be to provide a code. Now, if I provide them a code, they have to go to wakelet.com. And then from wakelet.com, they would have to select enter code. And then once they get it, they get a pop up to join it that way. That's another step I would suggest just giving them the URL to join directly so it you know limits any errors if they don't have it you know in the correct case and things like that. So that is for the space itself, but let's say I have a specific collection such as the ideas for collaboration. I can do it two different ways. And right now this one is marked as private. So unless I invite people to be contributors, nobody is going to be able to see this. It's only for me. If I want anyone with a link to see it, I can change the privacy, but this is going to be so like let's say your student is creating a collection and you only you want to be the only other person to be able to see it. Using private and then having them add you as a contributor is probably the best way if you only want it to be shared between you and an individual student. I'm going to leave it private for now and I can use the three dots, which is the more icon at the lower right of the actual board. And I can select, if I select share, this won't work and I will show you why it's marked as private. So sharing only works and that's viewing. When you say share, that means you're viewing it. It doesn't mean you're editing or, or collaborating on something. It's just the view option. So let's say you've made all these resources and you don't want your students to add anything to it. The share option is great and you would need to change it to unlisted before you can give them that code. So that's the way you can do it is to share it as unlisted if you just want them to view it. You can also get the embed code from right here. But I actually want to invite you to collaborate with me. So I can either use the three dots and go to invite, or I can view the collection and have it open. And at the top, next to edit, there's an invite button. From here, I can copy the link. And same idea as how we did the space, I'm going to put it into. our chat. And if you will select that link that I've provided you in the chat, it's going to allow you to join the Wakelet collection. And from there, you'll enter a name. And so you would probably want to identify to your students what you're asking them to provide you if you're letting them join without having, you know, their own um, account because they're going to be editing it. And, oh, I'm sorry, thank you, Crystal. It only went to the panelists, I see. I apologize, my life today. <laughs> she can attest to this. Uh, <laughs> and now you should be able to get into the Wakelet and when you select edit, which you'll get a pop-up once you do that. So if I go to, I'm gonna go to my incognito window. If I paste that code and I'm not logged in, this is what you should see. And I'm just gonna put example participant. Just I'm just doing this to show you this is what you know an area that they would add their name to select add and now slowly but surely it's biting me. Let me try again. That campus internet. Yep, gotta love it today. There we go. You should have gotten a prompt up at the top right that get started by clicking edit. So once you're ready, you select edit and now the look is a little bit different. As a contributor, you will only have some of the options that the owner has. You will not have the option to add a tweet unless you have the URL directly to the tweet, or you can also not add, and I, um, it YouTube. was, yes, YouTube. YouTube, it has to be, you can't just search for a YouTube video. You have to find the YouTube video and paste the URL address. So at this time, we would like you, if you have ideas to actually um, add how you might be able to use it on your own, we do ask that you, oh, look, finally that bookmark showed up. <laughs> That's really funny, <laughs> sorry. So there was a delay in the bookmarks, but this, this is going to give you the, our option to add content to here. And at the bottom of each of these, if I say I am done editing, I can see a thumb, thumbs up. If I hover on the thumbs up, I have the option of, you know, reacting to other people's posts, 
with a thumbs up, a heart, a hundred idea, like a great idea or a celebration. So as you do this, you will see at the bottom as people are reacting that it changes at the bottom what is being shown. So people can react, but again, they can't specifically comment to those different items as they are um, reacting in the wakelet itself. Crystal, yes. was there anything else that I missed from the being able to collaborate? Nope, you got it all. You had everything. Do you wanna refresh the page? See if anybody's added anything? Yes, I will. So that was kind of what we were talking about too. It's not going to automatically refresh. And I see, yes, there, there is something um, that has been added above and I see, you know, oh, you can share group, yeah, group, group projects. That's a great idea. Um, this can also, you know, be used on a personal basis, not just education. Um, a lot of people are using this instead of using like their bookmarks on Chrome or another browser, they're using this like as they come across things, um, even at conferences like conference notes and things like that, a repository to even share with others from your team as you're getting resources or ideas from other places that you can share across the board. But the one thing that we all say is, although it's real time, you sometimes do have to refresh the browser. So that's one of the downfalls that we have come across with that. And again, and now I am, I'm going to minimize this one because that is in my incognito window. Um, if I really didn't like how it was showing and we wanted to look instead of the mood board at the media view, we could also do that after we've done it or after we've created it. And I can also see at the top, you know, who is here based on the name. So similar to what you would get on you know, Google Drive, but you can't see necessarily where they are um, if they're not part of you know, an account, just like in Google Drive as well. And with that, I know there was a question regarding, um, do they have to have a Wakelet, Wakelet account before they can see a post? And as long as you're sharing that URL, whether it is to view it, or to, and now if they wanna view it, you have to be at least unlisted, if not public. Um, they shouldn't be able to you know, have any problem with just viewing, but if you want them to be able to add, they would just need that link from the invite instead of the share itself. Were there any other questions? Not that have come in yet. As a reminder, if you do have any questions, you can use that Q and A in the toolbar. We'll be happy to address those. And I'm also going to put the link and I'm actually going to do it to everyone this time. <laughs> this is the link to the What is Wakelet. Um, that's gonna be the main Wakelet. And all of these have the links directly to all of those other sections we talked about that have a lot of resources. So if you are looking for specific topics, you can go to any of those other topics to get more information. And at the bottom, we also have the Wakelet Help Center and Wakelet Help videos for you. They also do very regularly webinars. Um, I would say nearly weekly. Um, so if this is something that's interesting to you and you wanna see how other people are using it, they, they very often do webinars. Thank you all so much. And thank you for reminding them about the webinars from Wakelet. I think that's a great resource as well. Um, everyone, thank you for your time. And if you do have any questions, feel free to send those over to us. And we're happy to get the answers that you need. Um, thank you, Crystal and Kristen, for your time this morning and your presentation. We certainly enjoyed it. And everyone, we have recorded this. So we will be sharing a recording link. So if you'd like to share it with your colleagues, that will be available soon. Also, we are continuing our learning and growing series, um, webinar series in the coming week. So if you are interested in sharing um, resources with other instructors that have been helpful to you, we'd love to hear um, about that. And if you're interested in proposing your own webinar, um, you can do that here. I'm going to post that link here in the chat. So um, please feel free to share any ideas that you have, and we'd love to discuss that with you. Um, again, if you have any questions that come up, you can direct those to marketing 
at hawkslearning.com. And again, we will be sharing a recording of today's presentation with everyone. I hope everyone has a great day. It's Friday, so I hope everybody has a great weekend. Everyone um, stay safe and well, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.